Hello, and thank you for participating in this Pattern Quick Pick, examining the use of decodable text in the kindergarten through second grade classroom developed collaboratively with Pattern consultants who specialize in literacy. There will be a part two to this Quick Pick titled Maximizing the Use of Decodable Text in the Kindergarten through Second Grade Classroom. The mission of the Pennsylvania Training and Technical Assistance Network, PADEN, is to support the efforts and initiatives of the Bureau of Special Education and to build the capacity of local educational agencies to serve students who receive special education services. Our goal for each child is to ensure individualized education program, IEP teams, begin with the general education setting and the use of supplementary aids and services before considering a more restrictive environment. For this quick pick, we will focus on the following objectives. Define the characteristics of decodable text. Study the rationale for using decodable text identify when to use decodable text, and to examine text for decodability. So what is decodable text? To clarify, we offer these two characteristics. The first characteristic is a high degree of words that are phonetically regular and a high degree of words that include letter sound combinations that have been previously taught during phonics instruction. Throughout this presentation, we may refer to decodable text as connected text, which does differ from simple word lists and phrases to include sentences and passages. Michael Hunter and Linda Farrell, literacy experts, mention these additional characteristics of decodable text. Subject matter is secondary to decodability of the words. Text should start with CVC words and move slowly to more complex spelling patterns, for example, following a logic, phonics, scope, and sequence. The primary goal of decodable text is not necessarily comprehension, but repeated practice of phonics skills that students have learned and apply while reading connected text. Pictures that support the story, but not specific words. Other texts available to primary teachers are predictable, leveled, high frequency, and easy reader text. None of these texts fit the criteria for decodable text used in the context of this quick pick. Why should we use decodable text? One reason we should use decodable text is that decodable text supports readers in word identification. Decodable text theoretically allows for greater application of phonics lessons during reading, Another reason is direct readers' attention to letters and sounds. It has a logical scope and sequence. It discourages guessing based on pictures or context. And accuracy must be established prior to fluency. Providing students with decodable word lists is a scaffolded approach to having students read decodable text passages, but word list reading practice alone is not sufficient. The purpose of phonics instruction will likely not be fulfilled if students are not given numerous opportunities to apply letter sound knowledge during reading of connected text. Mesmer, 2001, reminds us that connected decodable text serves as a conduit to the application of phonics instruction. Building accuracy means providing students with multiple exposures and opportunities to practice phonics skills. It is important to note that fluency can only be achieved once students have become accurate with phonics skills in decodable text. Before students are ready for decodable text, there are a few prerequisites we want to ensure that they have in place. Students are ready for decodable text when they understand that words are composed of individual speech sounds, which is phonemic awareness, words are composed of individual letters, spoken and written words are linked, there is a system of how words are constructed. Prior to students having obtained the skills listed here, predictable text could be used. A predictable text example would be brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? by Bill Martin Jr. and Eric Carle. The language is repetitive and the pictures support the words. 
It is not assumed that a very young child would be actually reading the book, but would rather be repeating the phrases from memory. An excerpt of this book is, Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see a red bird looking at me. Red bird, red bird, what do you see? I see a yellow duck looking at me. And the story continues in a repetitive fashion. When children develop sound symbol correspondences, they are able to process vowels and fully blend the sounds and words. They should then move away from predictable text. Moving from predictable text to decodable text at this stage greatly benefits the transfer students must make from practice of phonic skills in isolation to practice transferring these skills to connected text. Only when students develop proficiency with the full scope and sequence of phonic skills should teachers transition students from decodable text to what is sometimes referred to as level text. This transition to level text would typically be appropriate when students can read it at about a mid-second grade level, an FMP level J, or a 450 Lexile level. Using level text for reading practice before this time can cause students to engage in ineffective practices such as using a picture to guess an unknown word, using context to guess an unknown word, or using limited sound symbol correspondences, such as looking at the first letter in a word and then guessing. These types of student attempts at decoding are poor habits and used only by students who have weak reading skills. When we place students in text where they are asked to read many phonics patterns they have not been taught, we inadvertently cause students to engage in these practices. Practice does not make perfect, Perfect practice makes perfect and permanent. We want to place our students in text where they can successfully use the sound symbol correspondences they have learned. Although an exact percentage is not clear, an extensive literature review by Mesmer's 2001 article, Decodable Text, a review of what we know, averages the suggested numbers and supports that 64% of text should be decodable. The formula on this slide shows how to calculate text decodability. After considering this calculation, taking time to review core text that is available to your students may be beneficial. Just like any other skill in life, practice makes us better. In order for students to become better readers, we need to provide them with multiple opportunities to practice exactly what they have been taught. One way to achieve this is by analyzing text with a lesson to text match calculation. A lesson to text match calculation will reveal how highly correlated a text is to the skills that students have been taught. As mentioned, the equation for a lesson to text match calculation is shown here. In addition to previously taught phonic skills, text should include learned high frequency words and the text also may contain content related story words that the teacher would simply tell the students. Story words may be non-decodable to students due to the advanced phonics patterns they contain that have not yet been taught. The teacher must be very familiar with the scope and sequence of skills that have been taught in order to determine if a word is considered decodable for students. We will now demonstrate how you would go about determining percent of words decodable using a lesson to text match calculation with a West Virginia phonics lesson story. This story would be selected to allow students to practice reading short O words. The story has a total of 48 words, not including the title. 25 of those words reinforce the short O CVC pattern and have been coded green for your easy reference during this exercise. 25 divided into 48 gives you 52% decodable words using only pattern specific short O words. If we count the learned high-frequency words into the calculation, 
we then can consider 20 additional words the students can read without help from the teacher. We have coded all the learned high frequency words in blue. Again, for your reference, 25 short O words plus 20 additional known words equals 45 out of 48 total words, which equals 94% of the words that the student should be able to read without help from the teacher. That leaves only three words that we are considering story words. The teacher would tell the students these words as they would not be expected to read them independently. As you can see, this story is highly decodable considering the repeating short O pattern in a large number of words and many learned high frequency words. Students would practice reading the story for accuracy and then develop fluency with the text through repeated practice. Thank you for participating in this Patton Literacy Quick Pick. For more information about the Patton Literacy Initiative, please visit our Patton website at www.patton.net and click on the Educational Initiative tab, then click Reading. The Patton website features current trainings being offered, past training recordings and documents, and many other valuable resources. For additional information on decodability and text, please see the references that we have listed on this slide. Thank you for watching this quick pick that focused on examining the use of decodable text in the kindergarten through second grade classroom. We hope you also watch part two, maximizing the use of decodable text in the kindergarten through second grade classroom.